France. One smoke up the middle. High block. Left center. They're giving up on it because this is good. Ty France is an all-star first baseman for the Seattle Mariners. Ty has become a staple in the Mariners lineup, and as we say in Seattle, vive Ty France. Ty grew up in East Los Angeles and attended South Hills High School in West Covina, California. Throughout high school, he played both baseball and football, and yes, that's him on a pitcher's mound. Before high school, however, Ty said that he grew up as an Angels fan, and throughout the 2001-2002 seasons, he said that he went to about 60 or 70 Angels games including Game 2 of the 2002 World Series, and in that series, the Angels would take home the trophy. After high school, Ty would head south to San Diego State University, and over his three-year career, he would start 187 games at the position he grew up playing, which is third base. And throughout his time at SDSU, he would average a 337 batting average with a 905 OPS. He would set the record for most career hits by pitch with 48, become top 10 all-time in at-bats, hits, total bases, doubles, and RBIs, and the Aztecs would win the Mountain West Conference Championship every year that Ty France was on the team. It was unbelievable. I mean, coming in as a freshman, I never thought this would happen, and our guys just came out, flipped the switch like we do every year, and it's, it's crazy. And throughout his career at San Diego State University, he would be coached by Mr. Padre Tony Gwynn. I think just kind of like the easygoing guy that he was, just watching him go about his like daily routine and business, he was just so professional about it and there was never a panic to him. And I think that really helped me just observing that, going through college and pro ball, like being in the minor leagues and struggling, remembering that, okay, if he could never panic, like why should I? Ty would enter the MLB draft in 2015 after his junior year. And at that time, his agent told him that he was projected to be drafted anywhere from the third through the seventh round but for whatever reason, he would fall to the 34th round before the Padres would select him with the 1,017th overall pick in the 2015 draft. He would decide to forego his senior year and stick in San Diego with the Padres. He would start out by playing for the Tri-City Dust Devils in Washington State. Again, shout out to the Dust Devils, but he played there in 2015, whereas Andres Munoz played there in 2017. Over the next few years, Ty France would progress through the minor leagues he would get a majority of his reps at third base, although he did play some first base throughout. In his time in the minor leagues, he averaged a 294 batting average with an 859 OPS. And during this time, the Padres were having some serious struggles at the major league level. In 2016, they went 68 and 94. 2017, they were 71 and 91. Although at the deadline that year, they were able to trade James Shields in exchange for Fernando Tatis Jr. and one other minor leaguer. The following offseason, they would sign first baseman Eric Hosmer to that just fantastic eight-year deal. And by the way, the Padres paid almost $20 million in 2022 for Hosmer to play for the Red Sox and are set to pay over $12 million per year through 2025 for Eric Hosmer to not play for the Padres. They would then go 66 and 96 in 2018. And with their third baseman hitting just 236 that year, it seemed there might be an opportunity for Ty France to step in. But then they signed another free agent. You think you're going to get a shot. And then one day they signed Manny Machado. Year before they signed Eric Hosmer. Are you looking around like, okay, either I'm finding a new profession or I'm going to have to find a new team. Did you, did you kind of think about it that way? No. Um, so it's kind of funny. So they, put me on the 40 man roster going into the spring of 19. Um, come into spring, having a really good spring for the first like two, two and a half weeks, um, you know, expecting to be the opening day third baseman. And I walk in the, uh, Tatis and I were joking about it. Like, he's like, hey, you know, Manny's still out there. Like, we're gonna go get him. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, and then sure enough, I, I walk in the locker room uh, after live abs and he's sitting there busting up and i'm like why are you why are you laughing so hard he goes look up and all over the tv is you know manny signed the mega deal with san diego um and he was like i told you it was gonna happen i was like you're a jerk <laughs> but um honestly it, it turned out to be a blessing um i learned a lot from manny um he's you know 
been one of the best for 10 years now or seven, eight years, however long he's been playing. Um, so to be able to have a guy like that, and I worked with him every single day um, that spring, you know, got a chance to play with him the following year um, or that season. Um, so, I, you know, a lot of people would have been upset about that, but for me, I, I took it as an opportunity to learn from one of the best in the game. So France would start 2019 in AAA and through 76 games at that level, he batted 399 with 27 home runs and 89 RBIs. Yeah, that 399 is not a typo. And if you assumed that he would play 162 games that year, he would be on pace for 57.5 home runs and 189.7 RBIs. Come on. Fernando Tatis Jr. would have two major injuries throughout the 2019 season. So in April, after Fernando's first injury, Ty France had his first opportunity in the big leagues, playing third base while Manny Machado moved to shortstop. Pick to third by France, spins and fires, dug out by Hosmer, what a play! In his first stint in the big leagues, he would play 34 games, batting to a 235 average with a 647 OPS. Base hit for Ty France in the left field corner. And on May 12th, he would hit his first home run off of Noah Syndergaard. Now back, looking up and it is gone! Ty France has left the building his first big... Ty would head back down to AAA in June where he would continue to crush the ball. And his next opportunity would come in August after Fernando's next injury. He would play the remainder of 2019 for the Padres with the majority of his reps coming at second base. You can forget it. Way up and way out for Ty France. He would finish his first year in the big leagues with a 234 batting average, a 696 OPS, and seven home runs, 24 RBIs, and 69 total games played. Ty France started 2020 in a bench role for the Padres. He would end up playing in 20 of the team's first 36 games, batting 309 with an 868 OPS. Before on August 30th, he was traded to the Seattle Mariners along with Andres Munoz, Taylor Trammell, and Luis Torrens. Definitely a crazy experience, but I'm excited to be here. This is going to be a good opportunity. How did you find out kind of what was the situation when you got that call? So we were actually in the middle of our team fantasy football draft. Um, when Jace uh, came down and grabbed me and uh, took me and Luis up, up to his room and we called AJ and he let us know. And um, yeah, so it was uh, definitely a crazy story. Not during the fantasy draft, that's brutal. Heading to the Padres was catcher Austin Nola and relievers Dan Altavilla and Austin Adams. Now that it's been over two years since this trade, we can take a look and see how each team benefited. The Mariners are the clear winners here, as you'd suspect. The players the Mariners acquired have accrued 8.5 Fangraphs wins above replacement from 2020 through 2022. The Padres just 3.3 wins above replacement. And Ty France definitely holds the biggest weight out of all of these names. And he's under contract until 2026. Munoz was extended through 2026 with a few club options to take it through 2029. Taylor Trammell becomes a free agent in 2028, Luis Torrens in 2026, and for the Padres, Austin Nola becomes a free agent in 2026, Austin Adams becomes a free agent in 2025, and then Dan Altavilla is currently on the Red Sox. Here's Jerry Depoto talking about that trade. They can really hit. A tie, and this dates back to, you know, also to college. He was a San Diego Stater, and uh, it's the, I, I, he has hit everywhere he's ever been. Uh, Last year, he was a real popper for us with what he was doing at the, at the minor league levels. And then we saw things we really liked in the big leagues. A pretty good judge of the strike zone. He's got real power. He's, and the, the hit ability from line to line, it, it just sneaks up on you. His, he is, uh, he's probably not the athlete that Taylor Trammell is, but his performance you know, throughout his baseball life in the batter's box is, is really noteworthy. Uh, he's versatile enough to play multiple positions on the field. We feel like his natural position is likely to be third base, but he plays third base, second base, first base. Uh, we feel like he's athletic enough to stand out in the outfield as well and confident that the bat really plays and, and very much looking forward to, to getting him regular reps. Ty would finish out the year for Seattle playing both second and third base, finishing with a 302 batting average and 815 OPS with two home runs and 13 RBIs through his 23 games with Seattle. Did he get this one? Yeah, he did. There's the blast. In 2021, Ty would have a solid first full year in the MLB, as through 152 games played, he batted 291 with 18 home runs, 73 RBIs, and 813 OPS. France, give him a France! 
And the Mariners have a 1 0 lead. Todd Francis' first home run, the Mariners' first home run of the season. And remember how he set the career hits by pitch record for San Diego State University? Well, in 2021, he would lead all of baseball, tied with Mark Canna, in hits by pitch with 27. But he didn't just have a big year at the plate. Evan White, the Mariners' 2021 opening day first baseman, got injured in May, and Ty France made the move from second base to first base. He ended up playing 915 innings at first base that year and had 814 chances, and he only had one error all year. This makes for a 999 fielding percentage, and although fielding percentages for first basemen are typically higher than shortstops and third basemen, if you have this high of a fielding percentage, you're winning the gold glove. After all, Ty's teammate Evan White won the gold glove for first base the year before after having a 998 fielding percentage with one error through 403 chances compared to Ty France's 800 plus. Ty France was snubbed and the Astros' Yuli Gurriel ended up winning the gold glove after having a 995 fielding percentage and 1150 chances. Here's the Mariners infield coach Perry Hill talking about Ty France's move to first base. When you're playing on the left side of the infield, third base and shortstop, stop and think about this. Everything you do is in front of you. Everything you do is in front of you. Go to the other side of the field, like Ty France was a third baseman by trade. Now he's going to the other side of the field. He's got to manipulate his body and turn his body to field balls to throw to second base. Everything's not straight on toward right. first. Right. So it's harder for guys to go from the left side to the right side for that reason. So not only did Ty France have an unbelievable year at first base, but there was a lot more that goes into it than a lot of people think. You know, it's just not that he went over there and put his foot on the white thing and caught the throw and he underhanded the ball to the pitcher covering. You know, we were second in baseball and starting three, six, three, three, six, one double plays. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was talking about. Now, instead of catching that ball and being straight on the first or straight on the second, as he would be at third, now he's got to get, he's got to manipulate his body to backhand it, to turn to throw a second or the ball to his left. He has to catch it and reverse spin to throw it to yeah. second. So there's a lot that goes into changing sides of the infield that people really don't understand. Whitey was still healthy in spring training. So he got some reps at first, but he didn't get very many. Once Whitey went down about you know, first of May, he did a lot of this stuff. We went out, you know, early, like 2.30, 3 o'clock every day, and he got a lot of this stuff done while he was actually playing the game, which is also hard to do at this level. In order to uh, throw that ball to second, you know, at first, being a right hand a first baseman, you know, there's a lot more that goes into it than most people think, and credit to Ty France to spend the time and get really good at it. For, I mean, he only made one error at first base. Yeah, and he and right at a thousand in. In 2022, Ty France had another great year at first base. In his 891 chances, he had three errors this year, which makes for a 997 fielding percentage. But yet again, he was snubbed for the gold glove as Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who had 10 errors and a fielding percentage of 990, won this award. At the plate, Ty France had another great year. He had a 274 batting average. A 774 OPS, which is a 125 OPS plus, was only hit by a pitch 21 times this year and made his first all-star appearance. Ty France, home run! It's going to be a lot of fun to see what Ty can do in 2023 and beyond. But one thing's for sure, and that's that Ty France is Julio Rodriguez's babysitter. I would love to be a Mariners for the rest of my career and play in front of the Mariners fans. For the rest of my career, play, play with a lot of these guys here, being managed by Sky, having Ty as my babysitter, be with Mitch, I, everybody, nah. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll put a link on the right side of the screen to the player profile series, as well as another video that you might be interested in. All right, guys, goodbye, Zondi. Don't forget it. Stop it.